Hey, sports fans, it's Larry Eater with Run Blog Run. This is Epilogue. Yeah, Larry needs some extra words. Um, for Athletics Chat 17, um, Stuart and I recorded this on September 2nd uh, because Stuart's going on a staycation, which means, like many Brits, he's not one of the 30 million leaving uh, the British Isles to go on vacation. That's because there's a 14-day quarantine in France, in the UK, there's a 14-day quarantine in the Czech Republic, 14-day quarantine in Switzerland, you know, the, uh, and there's a 14-day quarantine from the US. So it's making it really, really exciting. Okay, so today we covered Gemma Ricci, very talented athlete um, who had did quite well in, in her young years. She's a few years younger than Laura Muir. Um, conversation, our friend Stuart Weir from Oxford, England, the intellectual capital of the world, um, did mention that when Andy Young, the coach of both Gemma and Laura, uh, first started coaching Laura, he was kind of nonplussed, but what he was taken back by is her drive. And uh, he had a, made a comment to Stuart one time, Andy Young did, that if you have a group of 30 athletes, you can probably make all 30 better, but you're not going to make all 30 Olympians. And then he said, but if you had the time and they had the drive, how many of them could be Olympians? I think that's interesting. I think there's their whole nature versus nurture thing. I think in the U.S., we have relied on a lot of natural talent. Um, the problem is I've seen really talented people who have no drive and I've seen really untalented people who have a lot of drive and I'm not sure what is better to have a bit of talent and to work your butt off. Um, I think that this sport's all about wherever you're at, physically talented or not. Uh, tall, short, skinny, you know, maybe a little overweight. There's a place for you in the sport. And what you put into it is what you get out of it. Uh, that's the way it's always been. And I think that really that's the way it always will be. Coaching is both art and science. What I mean by that is you better know the technological things, the technique of the sport. You need to know about nutrition. You need to know about physiology. You need some horse sense on how to recover athletes. But most of all, you need to be able to get the athlete to believe in your system because there's a lot of ways to do it. Some are harder than others. Some are easier than others. Um, it's part of what makes the sport so much fun. Um, and, and I think that it's one of the things that we as media sometimes fail to cover. Um, anybody can write about results. Well, results isn't what turns us on. It's about what happens in the competition. Today was the Lausanne Diamond League Athletissima. They focused on a pole vault this time. Um, Angelika Bengston of Sweden won the women's in 472. She battled with Holly Bradshaw. Holly looked pretty good. Just couldn't get over 472. Then the men's took off. You had Renault of Villeneuve, former world record holder. You had uh, indoor record holder. You have uh, Thiago Braz, 2016 Olympic gold medalist from Brazil. You had Mondo Duplantis and you had Sam Kendricks. And Sam and Mondo duped it out. They heard 582, they heard 587, they heard 592, they heard 597. They both heard 602. And then Mondo cleared 607, and he made one attempt at 615. The problem was our friends at Lausanne didn't think the meet was going to go on that long and weren't prepared for it, and the lighting was difficult. And Mondo quite maturely said, hey, you know what? I can't see you anymore. Reminded me of the story about Bob Mathias in the 1940s. 48 Olympics in London, 
where they had to bring pickup trucks and on a little incline to show the pole vault bar so Bob could figure out at 18 where the bar was. I think it was only his fourth decathlon. Uh, he went on to win the gold medal. So sometimes it's primitive, sometimes it's, it's not. Um, this weekend is the Evo Van Damme meeting. Evo Van Damme was a brilliant Belgian athlete, won silvers in 1976 in both the 800 and 1500. Uh, he was a bear of a man, tall, powerful, uh, died in an auto accident in December of 1976. And I'm not sure that there's been athletes with his charisma in Belgium in a long time. But the meeting, which is to celebrate um, Evo Van Damme, has had some great performances and continues to. And this year, we'll have some good events. And I'll have some okay events, too. But the one-hour run, the women's one-hour run, the men's one-hour hour run, uh, good thousand meters, good fifteen hundred meters. Uh, it should be a lot of fun to watch. And hats off to meet directors who are putting a meet on in this pandemic time because it's quite difficult. Um, just a quick aside. Thank you for all your thoughts and comments on the um, photo gallery we put up from the Sunset Tour from August and twenty ninth. Some great pictures from Jesse Williams. Uh, we'll have pictures up at the Drake Blue Oval Showcase by Mediacom uh, this weekend. So there'll be some other great photos. Thanks, Ty Patton and Blake Bolden from them. Uh, let's get back to the Brussels meeting. Uh, besides Brussels, there's a meet tomorrow night, Thursday night in Marseille. And you've got eight Brits running that one. Uh, you've got Laura Muir. You've got Jim Riki, you've got Oksana uh, uh, Clark. I'm going to miss her, her hyphen to name, uh, and I apologize on that. Uh, you've got eight or three British guys in the 800 as well, uh, and they're going to miss the British championships this weekend. British championships are a lot of – it's supposed to be a selection for a championship event, except there's no championships. So how do you get athletes to be there? You're not paying money, and these guys are starving right now. Uh, the, the, the luckiest ones who have been continuing to compete still keep their sponsorship going, but some of them have had to juggle a lot. And that's the, the nature of this beast. So I think that where we should go is that British Championships, they'll have some fun performances. Brussels will be interesting. BBC is not going to cover Brussels live because it would compete with the British Championships, so you guys will have to watch it on YouTube like I do. Um, we've got London coming up. I just saw the press release from London, and they're only allowing 12 media people there. Uh, so that's going to be most interesting. Um, I'm going to try to reach out on that one and see what's going on. And then... Um, uh, there'll be the Prague half marathon that I've got to post the piece on today too, but we'll have coverage from Lausanne today. This is September 2nd. Uh, we will speak to our friend Stuart on September, uh, 13th, I believe 13th or 14th. Uh, he's going to be away for seven days at a bit of a vacation. We'll have more content for you and we'll try to get something from the UK to say some thoughtful things with the British accent. But uh, this is Larry Eater, Epilogue uh, 17, the Athletics Chat. Thank you very much for supporting this programming. And um, if you want to help us, if you can buy an ad, buy an ad. But if you can't, even if you can, subscribe to our Facebook page, subscribe to our Twitter page, subscribe to Run Blog Run. We'll send you a nightly newsletter. Okay, have a great day. Thank you to Stuart Ware for his help. Thank you to Mike Deering for putting up with me and trying to keep me awake. Larry Eater signing off. Take care.